Good morning, saints. And good morning, sinners. Oh, it's been a couple of weeks. I've been waiting to say this. Uh, and finally, I'm here. It's good to be back. Uh, and it's good to be here with you. And I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, as I said, it's what a joy to, to be back uh, as we gather here to worship and praise our Lord Jesus. Um, for those of you who are here visiting for the first time, uh, I'm Pastor David Lagos uh, Fonseca, and so I welcome you. Uh, glad that uh, you are here. And whatever your circumstances, whether you are married, single, single again, with or without children looking for church or just browsing, uh, you are welcome in this place. And um, we also welcome our friends and brothers and sisters who are watching online. And so we greet them. Look at that camera. It's great to have you with us. Uh, hi, everyone. And we hope that your day is going well and maybe even better because you might have coffee by your side and a recliner and feel comfortable or maybe you're watching from your bed in the recovery room or rehab uh, or just from abroad and I know that I have some fans abroad so um, <laughs> my nephew and my mom so yeah <laughs> Uh, I invite you to record your visit with us. Please uh, write your name and your email or your phone number um, on the registration uh, sheets, uh, the pads that are uh, at the end of each pew, or pick up one of the con Connect cards and, and let us know how we can serve you. We would like to serve you well, so let us know what you need from us. Uh, and we would like to stay in touch with you and let you know uh, all the things that are happening in this season of Lent, uh, which will begin with Ash Wednesday pretty soon, this week. So uh, before we begin our worship, we have announcements. And the first one is that we have a scan, uh, we have a QR code. So if you want to follow the bulletin, the, the liturgy, you just scan that our QR code and you will have it on your phone. It is on the doors also here in the back. So every Sunday, you can have your bulletin at your, you know, in your phone or iPad if you bring one, and you can follow it. Now, maybe you cannot scan that, but if you can, that would be great. But uh, every Sunday, we'll have that ready for you. The other one is that we will have a Lenten study. It's the third day with Tom Berlin, and it is a good book. He has written many books, and we have enjoyed them. It's going to begin February 21st, sessions at 2 and 7 p.m., all right? Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday typically is our public announcement that we are Christians. You know, we want to, the imposition of the ashes on our forehead and let the whole world know that we are embarking on this journey of Lent. So we will have, this time we will have two times, from 10 to 12 in the morning and then in the afternoon from 4 to 7. You are welcome to come with your families. Who, um, and it's just for a few minutes for... Uh, communion, if you want communion, or the ashes, in position of the ashes. And today we have the Super Sunday. So there are plenty of soups in the back, and probably you brought some, so we can swap uh, and take your favorite one or eat your favorite one right away. Uh, oh yeah, why not? And uh, in preparation for, for tonight's uh, game, and I'm not going to say who I am rooting for. Well, uh, February is Black History Month, a time to remember the past, because when we know our history, know the past, we, we can shape the future. And uh, this month we will be sharing some of the, the contributions African Americans uh, have done to our country, to our nation, to the whole world. And there will be songs, uh, um, 
gospel songs or uh, that we will introduce in the service. And today we have one that is an amazing song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. We will hear it as a tribute today from the bells, uh, the chancel chimers, but also we will sing it all together. All right, folks, uh, I, I know that you have come here for different reasons, truly. Maybe uh, to find community, to see your friends, to seek community, maybe to seek uh, spiritual, personal truth, uh, to nurture your heart and soul, um, maybe to find comfort, maybe to find answers to some of your bigger questions. We welcome you, and, and, I, and I really hope that you find what you're looking for, but also I hope that you, you find really comfort and peace, and you find here love and friendship. Uh, so as we are about now to enter this sacred time, I invite you to stand and sing all together this opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, hymn 66. I invite you now to bow our heads in prayer. You welcome us, O oh Lord, with open arms. You welcome us as your children. And you look at us and see us the same, no one better or worse. And Lord, we, we come in this season when Lent is almost here. As with so many times before, we, we find that we are not really ready for this journey of discipleship. Because we are busy people. So many things claim our lives and prevent us really from being ready to take the steps of faith. And Lord, as we look at our barriers of readiness, help us to remember that, that Christ is with us every step of the way, that we are not alone, that Christ will help uh, lift our hearts and spirits and, and direct our path. So enable us, loving Lord, to take this journey of faith to new life with you. 
Empower this hour with the blessing of your spirit. And in this moment, open the doors of our hearts and lives that the one who knocks may enter. Receive what we bring and who we are. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I will invite the children for this uh, children's message uh, directed and guided by Nicole Gavina, our uh, family ministry director. Come on down. We're going to be very careful, so we're going to sit out here, guys, because we don't want to knock the water over today, okay? We're going to sit right here. Oh, that's water. Yeah, we, we want to just be very careful because it has water in it. All right, I'd like to welcome all the children for children's time. Today, we are doing our how-to unit this month, so that's our new theme of how-to. That's what we're centering all of our lessons around, this building how-to theme. And so, for our how-to theme, what do you guys think is a better fabric to wear around your neck? Do you guys think this one or this one? I'm going to pass this around so you guys could feel this. Oh, it's getting stuck in my hair. Which one do you like better? You like that one better? That feels good? Which one do you like better? This one has holes. Yeah, that one has holes. It's kind of rough. Yeah. This one's better, huh? What do you guys think? Yeah, this one's comfier, right? What do you guys think? This one, right? This one's very comfy. This one is pretty, but this one's the comfy one, right? Which one's the comfy one? That one, right? Yeah, people use this more, right? Because it's soft, it's comfy. That one? Yeah, this one is pretty, isn't it? What do you think around your neck, though? Do you like that one or this one? There's no right or wrong, though, whichever one. Sometimes beauty is pain, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we sacrifice for beauty. You like both? What do you think, Bronco? This one, right? Yeah, this one is very pretty, but it's that tulle fabric. It's kind of like burlap. It's kind of rough, just so the audience knows, too. You're not all getting a chance to, to test this out. And this one is more soft. It's more comfy, right? That would be the easy one, I would say, to wear. This one would be hard. It would be pretty, but it would be hard. Hard to wear. So I have some other questions for you guys, too. What do you guys think is easy or hard? Do you guys think getting a present is an easy thing to do or a hard thing to do? Hard. Hard? It's hard to get a present? It's easy? Easy to get a present? No, getting a present. It's hard if it's not your birthday or Christmas. Okay, so hard for some people, easy for others. This is good information. All right, now what else would you guys say is easy or hard? Playing with your favorite toys, maybe with your favorite friend or a nice friend, is that an easy thing to do or a hard thing to do? Easy. Easy, easy right? Hard, hard for some. Easy. It's easy to play with a fun toy, right? Have a good time with a fun toy, maybe a good friend. You guys are playing nice together. Now, what's another easy or hard thing? Doing chores, cleaning toilets, vacuuming, laundry. Hard, hard right? Yeah, that's hard. That can be a hard thing to do. It's not, not as easy as playing with toys sometimes, right? All right, one more. Easy or hard? If someone's pointing at you and making fun of you. Hard, right? It's not fun, right? When you played with a friend, that's fun, that's easy. But when someone's pointing at you, laughing at you, making fun of you, that's hard, right? Do you want to be nice to those people who are making fun? No, right? That kind of, how does that make you feel, Lorelai? Um, I was just going to say, if, if you're pointing at someone, you can see yourself. <laughs> yes, Lorelai just said, if one person's pointing one finger at you, three more fingers are pointing back at them. That, that is a good quote. <laughs> Uh, so is that, you know, how do you guys feel if someone's making fun of you or saying mean things to you? Sad, right? Sad. It can be really hard to be nice to someone who is not being nice to you. But you know what Jesus tells you to do? Jesus tells you to be nice to them anyway. Yeah, that, isn't that, that is hard, right? You're mad. They're making fun of you. They're not saying nice things. But Jesus tells us to 
be nice to these people, and even to pray for them. Because it is easier to, we want to try to stop the unkindness with a little bit of kindness. Right? Unkindness can spread really really far because when we're upset because someone's making fun of us we kind of want to be mad too and upset and we might say mean things to other people and that continues but if we're kind if we turn that around and say you know what you're saying it's hurting my feelings i hope you're just having a good day you know i'm so sorry you're having a hard time but what you're saying is not very nice if you try to be kind to that person show a little compassion that's what jesus wants us to do and that can maybe stop them from being unkind because maybe they're being mean to you because someone was mean to them first or they're having a hard day. And so Jesus is always there for you. He loves and supports you. And you guys have a wonderful congregation that loves and supports you and a lot of adults in your life to help you too if someone's being unkind. So we want to try and stop that unkindness with a little bit of kindness and compassion. And you guys are going to read more about that in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48 in your classroom. So you're going to read that story that Jesus is going to talk about, about loving our enemies. That's our theme and our big idea for today. So can you guys pray with me by repeating after me? Dear God, thank you for showing us how to be kind and love everyone. Amen. All right, we're going to go back to our classrooms and read that story. All right, let's be careful. Walk, walk, walk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We get to pray now. My favorite time of church. I'm sorry, Pastor. (laughs) But what do we have to share this morning? We have joys and concerns, things that are on our mind. I know, listen to this, Bob, all the kindness stuff. I feel really bad about the bad things I've said about you, and I'm going to apologize publicly one of these days. What do we have to share? Hi, I'm Marcy Schilling. Um, Just wanted to um, tell you about a joy we have. Our daughter Tracy got through her surgery very well. It was cervical neck surgery, so it was a little, we were a little scared about it, but she's doing fine. She's up and about, a little painful, but uh, she's getting that feeling back in her right arm, so that's what we we were praying that that would come back. And um, they have a new caregiver, and she's working out really well, so um, our granddaughter Alex was pretty happy to have her with her the other day. And um, I do have a concern. Um, Our daughter's friend, Jenny, um, is still very, very sick with cancer and probably is not going to be here much longer. Uh, She's in hospice at home, and so prayers for the Woolock family. Thank you. What else we have? I know I always got to keep my friend, Jim Hatfield. We got to keep him in our prayers. Is he watching, you think? He, fi- he finally figured out how to get connected? <laughs> That's good. Jim, I know you're doing great. If you can figure that computer thing out, let me know, okay? All right. What else? What else do we have to share? We have a baptism this afternoon. We're certainly praying for Ellis. Oh, I think Pastor's going to tell him about the cake, so I won't say anything about the cake or the chocolate milk that Ellis brought. I'm not going to say one thing about it. <laughs> What else? Any other joys and concern this morning? Back here, Margie. Uh, my husband, I'm sorry, joy and concern. My husband, Mike, has been moved to a memory care facility. And in order to be there, he had to be put on hospice palliative care, which means that he is done with therapy. But the joy is that David and Grace, uh, my son and daughter-in-law who are expecting, came to visit him yesterday and he just lit up when he saw them. So that was a great joy. That's very cool, very cool. Prayers for Vicki Mason also who is recovering from surgery. All right. And she might be watching us, who knows? And what about Alice? Is she here? Is Alice here? No? What have we heard on? She's doing fine. Good. Yes. Uh, I haven't seen her, so. Well, you've been gone. You have an yeah. excuse. <laughs> Hopefully she's doing well. Pardon me? Pastor Shirley? 
We don't care about her, do we? <laughs> Go tell her I said that. <laughs> Steve, Steve, have you noticed that he's digging deeper and deeper and deeper? <laughs> Steve, she's Steve. doing well. Good, no, Steve. no. She knows that I love her. Steve, yeah, Clint. He, he has to go home, Steve. <laughs> Steve, he has to go home, Steve. <laughs> All right. Let's pray then. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we get to share. We thank you for the celebration today with the baptism. And we know there are many, many joys and concerns that are out there. We ask that you watch. Covering, and we give thanks for that. But in each case, God, help us to, to, to help them feel the love that you have for us and for them, and help us to share that love with the people that we come in contact with. We are blessed in this church that, uh, that we have a praying church, and we have people that are concerned for their neighbors, and, and uh, we just give you thanks for that. And I ask that if you'll join me in the Lord's Prayer here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Steve. We proclaim Jesus with our mouths, uh, in our actions, and through our lives. So I invite you now to uh, offer up our lives to Christ that in our lives we may be servants of Jesus Christ. So I invite the ushers now to receive our gifts and offerings.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Lord, we pray that you will gather up these gifts we offer and will transform them into food for the hungry, hope for the despair, healing for the broken, and peace for those who are torn apart by war and fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, and we welcome now the Chancellor's Chimers. Oops. Sorry.
Good morning. Hopefully I will be able to read this after watching that. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. I've heard that done in every version possible growing up in the South. And hearing it today reminds me, and looking at the pictures reminds me of what it was like. But it also gives me hope for my children, my grandchildren, and all of your children that this world will continue to be what God intended us to be, to love one another as he loves us. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel today is from Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 21 through 29. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Hearers and doers, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching for he had taught them that as one who had authority and not as their scribes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is the grand finale uh, of the Sermon of the Mount, uh, and this passage gets uh, at the heart of Jesus' message. It is not enough to proclaim our faith. We must practice it. It is not enough to proclaim our faith. We must practice it. Max Dupree, a well-known writer and author, once said that beliefs shape practices. So if you want to know what you truly believe, you only need to examine your behavior. That is, we all have a set of assumed beliefs, what we think we believe. And then we have our real beliefs, which are revealed in our behaviors. If I say that I believe in truth, but in difficult circumstances, I lie to gain an advantage, then my real belief or core value is not truth. It is something else. And for us Christians, our challenge is always to align our practices, the behavior of our work, <laughs> workaday lives, with our stated believes. And this is the same problem articulated, uh, that is articulated by Jesus here in this passage in Matthew 7. There can exist a gap between saying one thing but really meaning and doing something quite different. And Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew 7.21 It is actually those who actually do the will of God who will be permitted entry into the kingdom of heaven. This sounds very similar to 
to what we read in the epistle of, of James. <coughs> in other words, faith without works is dead. See, for Jesus, it is the manner in which life is lived out that demonstrate whether or not someone is honestly one of his people, his true disciples. So witnessing to our faith in a daily basis through our work is crucial. We must have a faith that produces fruit. And in this passage, Jesus also talks about two builders who built two houses on two different types of foundations with two different results. And Jesus teaches us that the foundation upon which we build the house of our lives really matters. Notice that the two builders have several important characteristics in common. Let me point them out. Both heard the words of Christ. The two people in this parable both heard Jesus share his message of faith and repentance. And both knew the way of salvation, both heard the gospel, and each one had a reaction to it. Both built houses. The house in this parable is a picture of a life. Each man built a life based on how they interpreted the message of Jesus. They each applied the words of Jesus to their life as they they saw fit. They both responded differently to the gospel message. Now consider the contrast. One man built his house on the sand. We all know sand is unstable, ever-changing. And in this context, building on the sand speaks of people who build the house of their lives on self-will, self-fulfillment, self-sufficiency, self-satisfaction, self-righteousness. There is a works-based religion that has the appearance of being right, but lacks the power to save the soul. Paul describes that kind of person like this <coughs> in Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. See, people who build on the sun, uh, and they, they build on the sun because it really requires little effort, just a little change here, a little change there, and they can fool themselves and everyone around them into thinking that they are right with the Lord. Sand builders ultimately have their faith in themselves, not in God. Remember, remember the story, <coughs> excuse me, the story of the rich fool. Remember, he knew the law, but he was a sand builder. His foundation was shaky. On the contrary, the man who built his house on the rock, he built on bedrock. Because we know that building <coughs> on the rocks speaks, speaks of people who hear the gospel and believe it to the point that they build their lives on it. We read in, in, in 2 Samuel 22, 2, 3, that when David was saved from his enemies and escaped Saul's attempt to have him healed, he sang a song and he said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My rock, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. And at the same time, in the New Testament, Jesus is called the, the cornerstone, as well as the stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. <coughs> 1 Peter 2, 8 says, A stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall, they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Rock builders hear the words of God 
and they conform their lives to them. They believe it. They believe the Word of God. They practice the Word of God. They make the Word of God the foundation for their lives. They are doers as well as hearers. So, my question to you this morning, which one of those houses describes the kind of life you are building right now? What kind of builder are you? Who or what is the foundation for your life? See, when we go to buy a house, um, especially one that catches your eye, do you go first to the foundation of the house or, do, or, or are you more attracted to the exterior and interior of the house? I would bet that most everyone here would say that we are attracted to those things that above ground. You know, oh gosh, we saw that, that room that had a nice family room with nice windows and we fell for it. We must have it. You know, we have to have it. And, and we look at other things that always are above ground. But before you buy the dream house, there has to be an inspector who comes and will come out and take a look at those things you haven't looked at. The things that you cannot see. <coughs> and right up there at the top of the list, uh, one of the most important things that the inspector will need to pass is the foundation of the house. Well, you know, I would dare say we do the same thing in the building of our lives. We do the same thing. We always pay attention to the externals, the things that are above ground, the things others see, in which we think will make us happy. I mean, do you see, do you see that all that activity, all that energy, all that activity uh, or productivity is aimed to build above ground? I mean, we work feverishly to make sure we are <coughs> presentable, that we are prosperous, that we are as productive as possible. But folks, what have we made the bedrock of our lives? What is the foundation of your life? Is the foundation of our lives simply to work as hard as we can, to make as much as we can, so that we can be as successful as we can? How does success, financial prosperity, community notoriety, professional applause, and acclaim help us to answer the most important questions in life? Like, why are we here for? What is our purpose? At the end of the parable, the parable tells us that the storm came. And this image, is, this image is not just about some storm in life. This is the image of judgment. And in the end, one house stood. And the other <coughs> was totally destroyed. The house that was built on the sand could never face the withering judgment of God. And it collapsed. And this is a picture of what happened, what will happen to the, every person who builds their life on anything but Jesus Christ and the gospel. The house that was built on the rock experienced the same storm. And this house was battered. It might have been shaken, but it did not fall, for it had its foundation on Jesus Christ. So my question again, which one of those houses describe the kind of life you are building right 
now. Folks, all of us are building a spiritual house. Every day we work on it and try to improve it. Regardless of what you do to the house you are building, what matters most is the foundation. So, be sure you are building on Jesus Christ and the gospel. Be sure that you are building on Jesus Christ and the gospel. The good news is that if you realize today that you are building on the wrong foundation, you can change that right now. You can change that today. And you can come to Jesus. And he can get you started building on the right foundation. Build your foundation of faith before the storm hits. Well, we know we have been through storms already. And we have seen many, many storms these days. So, and for those storms, we need a solid foundation for our lives. Stand up. Stand, stand upon Christ and build upon Christ. Amen. Well, and now uh, we come to this special moment in the life of the church. We always rejoice when we uh, bring one child of God to profess openly and publicly their uh, belief in Jesus Christ and their, and their commitment to following him uh, each day. And we are privileged today to have Ellis uh, Jerome Bagley and Celeste Bagley. I invite you, both of you, to come up to the front, please. And Joyce. And also Diana. Diana is a friend of Alice, and she wanted to be here to participate in this baptism. And we are very happy that you could do that. Thank you. This is Alice, and you know him, and this is Celeste. And we would like to, uh, Joyce, go ahead. It's my pleasure to present today to you Ellis Jerome Bagley for baptism. Yes. And we would like to, to know uh, a little bit about themselves, so we're going to give uh, Celeste the opportunity to share some words. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, some of you probably have a sibling that you may not be that close to because there's a big age difference. My brother and I are seven years apart. We're also different genders. And then when he was 22 years old, he moved to the Chicago area, and my entire life has been spent on the East Coast. And we didn't, we always loved each other, but we didn't start to become close, really, until our mother passed away in April 2022, and I started to come visit him on a regular basis. So I think it was last year, April 2023, I'm visiting him, and it was Maundy Thursday. And I said goodnight to my brother. I'm driving down the street. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you ought to go to church. So I pull over to the side of the road. I get out Google. And what did I find but the combined service between this church and the other United Methodist Church. So I went to that. I really enjoyed it. So the next day, I said to my brother, I'm going back on Easter Sunday, would you like to come? And he politely said to me, no thank you. <laughs> so then I came back to visit him Mother's Day weekend. And I said, well, you know, I'm gonna to go to church this morning and I'll pick you up afterwards and we can go to brunch. And he said to me, I'm gonna go with you. And he's been coming to this church ever since. But um, Pastor David just said something in his sermon about sometimes, you know, you start getting closer to God and you hit a rock. 
and the rock for my brother was a major fire in his senior citizen apartment building last summer in July. But he kept coming to church, and in August, he had a conversation with Pastor David about getting baptized. So here it is February, and you think, well, why did it take so long? Well, they asked me, they say, well, when can you come back? And I thought it would be absolutely perfect for him to get baptized on Christmas Eve. What happened? My brother got COVID. So here we are in February. And I just want to say one more thing. Um, my brother tends to be a little bit shy. And he would rather be sitting in that next to the last pew where he sits every Sunday than standing up here. It takes a lot of courage for him to do what he's doing right now. And I just want to say I'm very, very proud of him. And I love him very, very much. Very So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present Ellis Jerome Bagley for baptism. Ellis. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all peoples of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? I will. And to you, our congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Ellis now before you in your care? Yes. With the help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Ellis with a community of love. <clears throat> And today we have Diana, who, who is going to help us pour the water into the baptismal font. Diana, would you please proceed? Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Ellis who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Thank you. Ellis Jerome Bagley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Very good? Yes. Okay, good.
Brothers and sisters, now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, we are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We're all one in Jesus Christ. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Ellis, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. I invite you now to give him a round of applause and welcome him. And Ellis, we'd like to give you this small token of our um, joy of being able to share with you today your baptism. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you. Brother, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And we have more. As uh, Steve didn't mention it because he kept it secret, you know. Uh, we uh, have cake uh, and other goodies for us to enjoy and to celebrate with Ellis today, uh, his incorporation into the Church of Christ, into the life of this uh, congregation. And so, and now I invite you now to remember the, the pictures that you saw today, the, the video of times that seem to be far away. But in reality, you see those realities in some places where still the virus of racism and discrimination are present. Lift Every Voice and Sing has been a great song, a great anthem for African Americans because it brings the hope that despite of all the odds that they have faced, they are beloved of God, they are children of God, and contributing citizens of this country since in its inception. So I invite you now to stand and sing together this beautiful song.
Dear friends, children of God, go forth recognizing God's grace on, on your journey. Go forth discerning the spirit calling in your life. Go forth with Christ as your foundation and guide. Go forth in the steadfast love of God to share the good news of grace with those who live in the valleys of injustice and neighborhoods of addiction and violence. Go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.